Good afternoon. My name's William Porter McRoberts, MD. Today I'm talking to you about neuromodulation. Who is a good candidate? Who's a bad candidate? Why you should do it? Why shouldn't you do it? And why neuromodulation? This is Neuromodulation University, Chapter 4, trying to educate everybody that is thinking about a spinal cord stimulator, peripheral nerve stimulator, deep brain stimulator, dorsal root ganglion stimulator, high frequency stimulator, burst stimulator, any kind of implantable pacemaker-like device for pain. We want you guys to know everything there is to know. And so today I'm taking a little time talking about why you would be a good or a bad candidate. And in my practice, I've done literally thousands of spinal cord stimulators, who I see succeeding and who I see failing and why. And this is a series trying to help you make a good decision whether you should go ahead and have one go ahead and not have one, whether you should try it or not, and give you as much information as we can, the good, the bad, and the ugly about neuromodulation. So, who is a good candidate? The best way to understand this is to think about what it's trying to do. Spinal cord stimulation, peripheral nerve stimulation, is about treat treating nerve pain. Nerve pain is where the pain sensing system has malfunctioned. It can be a bullet injury to the spinal cord, it could be a surgical injury to a nerve, it could be a herniated disc, a bad back surgery, it could be peripheral neuropathy, it could be even something as benign as say a uh, herpes virus infection that uh, is latent and continue to hurt, it's called post-herpetic neuralgia. But neuromodulation treats pain that comes from a malfunction of the pain sensing system. It does not treat very well pain that's normal say from a hot stove or a arthritic knee or some kind of trauma to the body, acute pain. Let's say you, you, you drive a nail through your hand, you're still going to feel it. It does not take that kind of pain away. But often chronic pain, when it's been there for a long time, has what we call ec ectopic firing patterns within the dorsal root ganglion and also within the cord where the pain takes on a life of its own. Uh, we can call it wind up. Uh, it's a phenomenon that's easily understood. Say you bang your thumb with a hammer and now the thing is, is, is going crazy and you're feeling enormous amounts of pain from your hand. Then you slip your thumb into your pants pocket and it hurts like hell. And you think, why would my pants pocket hurt my thumb when I'm not destroying the tissue, for example? But it can almost as hurt as much as hitting the thumb with a hammer. It's because the pain sensing system is wound up and is over-reporting, amplifying the sensation as, as pain. This is what happens all the time in chronic pain. And so the pain sensing system is over-reporting the pain, say from a bad knee or um, a bad knee surgery or bad back surgery. It's, it's malfunctioned. And so what neuromodulation does is, and it does a very good job of this, is it returns the pain sensing system back down to normal so that it is actually just reporting the pain as it should be which is often vastly more tolerable than, say, pain which is overreported, sometimes amplified 10, 20, 100 times. Um, so if there's pain that is abnormally uh, overreported, it has a likelihood of working, an injury to the pain sensing system, so to speak. If you have arthritic pain, if you have achy pain, what we call nociceptive pain, it's just not as effective, at least with the modalities that we have today. Shortly, uh, very soon, hopefully, we're going to have things like burst stimulation and high-frequency stimulation and dorsal root ganglion stimulation here in the U.S. They may offer better benefits to those who have normal pain, uh, regular pain, uh, pain which is achy, deep, burning, etc. Not the normal electrical pain that stimulators work well on. We simply don't know. They're undergoing FDA trials as we speak. Um, they have been shown to be somewhat efficacious in Europe, and so it's very hopeful. Europeans are luckily built a lot like Americans are, uh, so we're hopeful. So when your doctor is mentioning spinal cord stimulation, he or she has probably thought that you have nerve pain or some kind of pain that would likely respond, and it may be overreported pain, for example. So you undergo a trial, for example. So one of the things we ask and uh, historically have asked is um, uh, to get a behavioral medicine uh, consult. Uh, it's not because we think you're crazy. Um, uh, everyone's a little bit crazy, I say, but 
the way in which we understand and uh, handle pain, I tell patients is kind of like, uh, you know, pain is a, is a marathon, pain is an Olympic event, and we're not prepared for it uh, psychologically. We're not prepared for it physically. And so seeing a psychologist or a psychiatrist, their job is to really help us um, get ready for and uh, and deal with the pain in a way that uh, maximizes the outcome and minimizes the frustrations and anxiety and fear that are associated with chronic pain because pain is an emotional experience. It can't be separated from that. Um, there are many studies that look at how, say, Zen monks and uh, others can walk across hot coals or bear pain that's otherwise inhuman. And they've been given the basic skills. Those are the Navy SEALs of dealing with pain. So seeing a psychologist really, in my uh, estimation, gets you a little closer to being capable of really dealing with the, the worst part of pain. If you can deal with it, the pain gets better. And we know that those guys, the, the Zen monks, they don't report pain like you and I do. And the reason is they, they have an aptitude and ability to diminish the type of pain. So we also send people for evaluation because we want to know if they're competent in and capable of using the stimulator itself. Most of them are not that complex, um, but nevertheless, if it's overwhelmingly difficult, uh, say for an older person, we need to know. And they'll, they'll put you through a variety of tests. The last reason we send you is because that's the way it's always been done. And insurance companies are also hoping that uh, some of our candidates will fail and, uh, and they won't have to pay for a spinal cord stimulator or peripheral nerve stimulator. Um, nevertheless, I look at it in the former two, which is it gives us a, an idea as to where you are, the patient is, in the continuum of being able to deal with their pain. Uh, some people have better coping mechanisms, some people are just worn out and, um, and need real help. So they help us understand and uh, recognize those people who need more than say just a spinal cord stimulator uh, to help them. So the good candidates are people who are gonna have uh, nerve pain, uh, burning, electrical, zapping, shooting, uh, traveling pain, uh, pain from a malfunction of the pain sensing system, be it a spinal cord injury, pinched nerve, failed back surgery, uh, uh, lumbar radiculopathy, spinal stenosis, um, all of these things injured the, the pain sensing system, a cut nerve, injury from a, an operation that went bad or scar tissue on a nerve. These people do generally well and generally those who don't are those who have arthritis, arthritis and arthritic type pains or just normal acute pain. So I hope this helps. It's, it's not a, a, a complete uh, a description. I certainly have pa patients who do have normal arthritic pain who do get relief with neuromodulation, but nevertheless, those are the ways we make our decisions. I hope this has been helpful, and um, you may want to visit our website, internationalhouseofpain.com, or come visit us in person. We practice medicine, uh, myself and uh, my partner, Paul Wu, down in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale. I'd love to see you and uh, show you our best. Again, thank you very much for watching.